What is going on, traders? Welcome back to The Traveling Trader. Happy Friday to you. Let's get right into it. I wanted to talk about the Bitcoin halving that's upcoming. The estimated date is around May 13th. Somebody in our trading group had sent me this article saying that analysts predicts Bitcoin at $5,000 in Q1 2020. Here's why it is compelling. And there's this chart showing the previous two halvings and what Bitcoin did right before the halving. Now, obviously, a couple of caveats up front, just because an asset or a commodity did something before doesn't mean that it's going to behave in the same exact way again. And two, we're not fortune tellers. This is just analysis about what scenarios are plausible. And that way you can set up your trades accordingly. It's very childish and myopic to say, oh, I was right and you were wrong. I predicted Bitcoin would be this price on this day and it actually happened. Or you predicted that it would be this price and it didn't happen that's not what technical analysis is right that's just the bullshit that you see on crypto twitter and crypto youtube but anyone that's that's been trading for a long time knows that really the, the value in technical analysis is trying to find what are the plausible scenarios what are the key levels so that you can set up your trades and your stop limits accordingly it's not so that you can prove that that you were right or try to predict the future anyway so I looked at this chart and I did some analysis of my own looking at the halvings and I marked the previous two halvings here in blue. This one is the one that's upcoming and I'm using the weekly chart as opposed to the daily that was used in, in this article. And what I noticed was that Bitcoin actually does something really remarkable before the halving. So it establishes a, a new, it establishes an all time high, right? And then it establishes a second high that's just short of that before the having before tanking a little bit ahead of the having itself so looking at this visually here's what i'm talking about it establishes an all-time high and then right before the having or not right before but sometime before the having there's a second high right and then we see a decline before the having and this is presumably due to uh you know the expectation of the news event a lot of times when when the news event is widely distributed beforehand it's already priced in and so you do end up seeing a sell off happening before that that news event you see this in the stock market as well right so that's why you have the the, the um anecdote buy the rumor sell the news so we see here that bitcoin established a high of $33 hilarious that we we're even talking about that price level when it comes to Bitcoin. And then, you know, it tanked, obviously, we had a, a crash. And then we see a second high established before the halving. This is about three or four months before before the halving of almost $16 before dropping another 30% or so before the halving and then gradually leading up to new highs, right? And then in the leading up to the second halving, we see here that Bitcoin established a, a new all-time high, right? And this is when it hit above $1,000 for the first time. This was at around 1150. And then you see Bitcoin obviously retrace, you know, crash all the way down to 100. I mean, this was bad. This went all the way down to, you know, $169 after hitting you know, a price above a thousand dollars. Bitcoin lost almost 90% of its value. This was probably the worst crash in history. This was around the Mt. Gox time when that exchange shut down. And then you see a second high, right? So there's the all time high. And then there was a second high that didn't quite reach those heights at about seven, seven hundred and ninety dollars, right? And this happened just a couple of just about a month before the second halving, right? The price retraced to the 200 weekly MA. We see the, the golden cross between the 50 and the 100 MAs. And then Bitcoin never looked back, went on to establish new highs. And this is the obvious infamous or now famous bull rally that took us to almost $20,000. And then last year we had a really nice run when Bitcoin was flirting with hitting uh, all-time highs, but it came just short of that. So this is our second high currently at around $14,000. This was last June. We now see the golden cross between the 50 and the 100. On my chart, the 50 is the orange, the 100 is the yellow. We're talking about SMAs, these aren't EMAs. And we do see a retest of the 200 weekly MA. Those that have been around on this channel for a long time know that we were talking about the possibility of Bitcoin hitting the 200 MA. Not only was it a possibility, it was the, the most likely scenario, right? Like Bitcoin has to, or any commodity or asset has to test these key levels at some point. This second high was reached about three months before the first halving and this second high was reached about a month before the second halving this would be a year so it is very plausible just based on this trend obviously we're just going off of trend analysis here 
it's very plausible that Bitcoin actually does establish a new high or, or not a new high because obviously the all-time high is 20,000. So a high past 14,000, but just shy of 20,000 before the third halving. And it is it is also plausible that this 14K is the second high. But being that the, the golden cross already formed here on the weekly, I don't see Bitcoin tanking until it starts to rally a bit. And if we look on the daily, and break this descending channel, right? So we could see a scenario where Bitcoin does break the descending channel. We go on to reach, you know, e either 9,500, which is the 0.786 level. We could even reach 10,000 before Bitcoin then retraces, you know, 20 or 30% before the halving. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about the, the drop right before this halving. So after establishing a second high, Bitcoin dropped about, 30% as well, right? You see this this t big red candle here, 30% before the second halving. So 30% drop here after the second high, 30% drop here after the second high. So 30% drop here. You know, this article is assuming that that Bitcoin could drop 30% from where it currently stands. However, Bitcoin could rally, break out of this descending channel. We are seeing good volume and I'll talk about the volume in a second, but we could break out of this descending channel right hit you know 9500 10000 even match the the high that we the second high that we saw back here before retracing 30% and that would still you know put us at a decent price level it doesn't mean we, you know we have to tank to 5000 so if we hit 10000 and retrace 30%, that would obviously put us at around 7,000. If we hit 14,000 and retrace 30%, then that would put us at around 9600. So you know, these are just some scenario. Obviously, these are we're talking about long term charts. And again, a, a commodity or an asset doesn't have to do exactly what it did before. We are getting pretty good volume here in January. If you look at January, obviously, it beats most days in December, minus this December 17th surge that we see. But, you know, otherwise, we are getting pretty good volume. It is, you know, while we're knocking on this resistance, we could see a break of this descending channel or, you know, it could stay within this trend for a while. As you guys know, we've been playing this trend since, you know, last year. It's been a actually Bitcoin has been rather predictable, right? I mean, if if all you did was just buy support and sell at resistance, you can do this three, four five times within a six month period and come out with healthy profits. And if you want access to the trade alerts, link is in the description. So in conclusion, what do I project will happen? I don't think Bitcoin will crash again, but I do think we will go on gradually to break this descending channel. It is crazy though, because between highs, right? Between the, the high that we saw in 2011, which was you know, around 32 bucks and the next all time high was over $1,100. And then between $1,100 and the next all time high, this was obviously 20K. So we are talking in the range of, you know, over 30X and around 18X between, between highs. So obviously as things get more expensive, you have a diminished gains effect, right? So between $32 and, and $1,100, you're talking about what, 34X, 35X. And then between this and 20K, you're talking about 18X. But even just at, at 10X from 20K, we're talking about a $200,000 Bitcoin. So as things get more expensive, obviously the multiplying factor gets diminished just by nature. I mean, you see this obviously with stocks as well, right? So if Tesla started off at, you know, 15 bucks, and we're now pushing 500 bucks, it doesn't mean that Tesla can jump another 3,000%, right? Because that would put us at above $15,000. Now, obviously in stocks, you have stock splits and whatnot to avoid getting the price up that high, but it becomes more irrational that an asset can grow as the price gets more expensive, right? That Bitcoin can 30X or, or 18X from, from 20K. Anyway, that is it for this video. Sign up if you want access to the trade alerts, our traders group chat, where we discuss trades, strategies, what coins we're trading, what stocks we're trading, et cetera, what levels we're looking at, where to enter, where to exit, where to take profit. Hit that thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. Leave a comment if you have a question, comment, agreement, disagreement. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.